All right, guys, let's jump into another best of three. So the last draft, I went uh, back to back three and oh. Let's see if I can make it three back to back three and oh. Pack one, pick one, easy pack mate. I mean, nothing even close to this. I cannot believe that Firewalker is ranked the same. That's clearly a mistake. I think Packmate's closer to 3.5. Ooh. Pick two Avalanche Caller after a green card. And then we lean into Snow. I like that plan. Interesting. So we're, we're getting past some really good red cards. That's uh, Firewalker's good. And there's also the Liberator. I don't like Gruel. But I'm not. I guess I could also take a Struggle or a Forest. I'm not sure what the pick is. Man, this is this is a this is a tricky pick three. I think like the responsible pick is to take the forest or struggle. I'm gonna take struggle. I mean, the 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 red two drop is good, but it's not like that good to where you need to go into another color for it. Blizzard brawl, yeah. This could wheel. Masked vandal might also wheel. There's also squash. I kind of wish I took the red boast card, but then not really, because this isn't like a be all end all combo. I wish this was an instant. I mean, I'm going to take it because I want to, I have avalanche caller. So that's, that's one snow permanent already. I'll pick up some more. Wow, we should be able to wheel one of these vandals. I do like Rootless You. Again, read the card. It's power or toughness six. So there's a decent range of creatures it can get. It can even get the blue stupid uh, comes into play tap giant, but it gets it for free. So I do like Rootless You. Okay, there's a Horizon Seeker. And a golden pick. I think I'm just going to take Horizon Seeker. The snow-covered mountain is still in here, so that's a sign that snow is not being cut off. So we should still be able to, be able to get some lands. Well, now there's now the snow card is gone. So do we want to try to make a Gruel deck with a Run Amok? Let's take a Port and do some maybe like an Elves deck with a Splash. Can we end up white? If we end up white, the pick is much, much better. I don't know. I think I'm supposed to take the run amok. And uh, I don't like gruel, but I mean, if we're, getting, if we're being passed red and green cards, I'm not going to just disregard that. So now there's a Craven Hulk. That's fine. This should not have wheeled. So it was correct to pivot into red in retrospect. I do like snakeskin veil, but I think we can get those later. And I'd, I'd rather have, I'd, I'd rather make sure I have at least one firewalker. Easy masked vandal. So no snow, but that's not, that's not the end of the world. I don't have a single Snowland. We could cut Blizzard. We could even cut. It looks like we're going to cut Avalanche Caller at this point with five picks left. Yeah, we might just want to try to build like this aggro gruel deck. But for this to work, I want like two or three run amucks. I think that deck is heavily dependent on uh, run amucks. 
Cinder Heart Giant is the first target for Ruthless Hume. And I don't really like the Outrider. And it's six, right? Yeah, it's six or greater, so it wouldn't even find it. Just another giant. And don't mind a berserker. So we 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 read the the flow of the cards correctly. And look at that, immediately rewarded with Ezekus Chariot, one of the best cards in the format, period. So we don't have too many things that we could copy. There's not too many cards that make tokens. I mean, this thing makes cats, but you know, if the cats die, I'd like to have at least some other tokens that I can copy. Even if it's like a one-one, it's a it's a free one-one. This is a no-brainer demon bolt. I'm just gonna cut avalanche, avalanche caller right now. I don't think blue's happening. I think what we what we want is this is the useless one, right? Yeah, just the easy uh, frenzy drader with two Tuskegee, Tuskeri, Tuskegee Herman, the to scary firewalkers. This is the useless one. Yeah, it is. Three or more legendary creatures that doesn't really happen in limited. And the uh, artifact is not really good. You have to pick a creature type. It's just not a good card. I do see the worm, but my preference is for aggro. And wow, so now there's another frenzy raider. Easy pickup. So I'm not sure if I 3 0'd a best of three draft. Wow, there's a Svella. All right, we're doing it. And Svella, Svella just changed the odds so much. Now I really want the, the Veil Hexproof card to protect Svella. Play it on turn four. Not sure if both of these are making a cut, but again, with Svela and the uh, snow artifacts, like much easier to cast. Let's see. We don't really want the snow land. Don't really want the hoggy mob. I guess I'll take a second masked vandal. Second one gets a little bit worse. Usually there's like one target you can find. It's a bit awkward if you have to play them on turn two. But we're not, yeah, like we're not exactly a control deck. We want to be attacking and boasting, copying cats, casting run amok on a chariot, making it a 7 7 trample, making sure it survives. Like that is, that is clutch. Really hope I can get another run amok. Wow, Arnie slays the troll. So we're definitely, definitely in the right colors right now. I don't regret at all pivoting into gruel. I think we're gonna have like a really, really strong gruel deck because no one else is in these colors. These specific two colors, I mean. Given that this is a weaker archetype, there's usually no more than one gruel drafter at a table and uh, one Orzhov drafter. The rest of the people are like fighting over some sort of, you know, three, three to five color snow deck. And as we can see, the snow, the snow decks, uh, the snow lands are being cut. So we don't need to be snow. Svela doesn't require you to be snow. Svela just requires you to, um, to be in these colors. Sacrifice a creature, search your library for a creature card that shares a creature type. Plus one, yeah, it's terrible. I don't mind glittering frost. This gets a little better without snow lands because you have less of a justification to play um, the uh, sh the shaper, the elf. I don't mind the helm in this deck, but it's not really strong right now. We don't have too many tokens. By the way, what I really want with uh, with chariot is at least one copy of dwarven reinforcements. Is there a possibility I get snowlands late? I'd still rather take like a sideboard troll in case for some reason. People decide to pass me a bunch of Snowlands in pack three. Rather than uh, smashing success because I can always get it later. All right, so I have more than enough playables already. I'm just going to take a smashing success for the sideboard over the other 3-2 haste. Especially that I'm getting another 3-2 haste. Shackles. 
So we have a deck and we got a whole pack to go. World Tree is not, you know, not for nothing. You know, in this deck with World Tree, now uh, I'm kind of tempted to take almost any utility land. Easy Highland Forest. That's just an awesome pick for us. Wow. We're getting a Bergy. I never played with this card in Limited, but it is just so sweet. There's another Arnie Snaze the Troll, but I think Bergy's still better. It lets you boast twice for free with two Frenzied Raiders. Sorry, the second boast is free. The first one you got to pay for. And another Svella and a Runamuck. Guess I'll take another Svella. And I can see that we're going to make cuts already. Probably one Cinder Giant can go. So even though we don't have too much snow, this is still a decent, efficient spell. Three three mana double red is not a problem for us because we're leaning more red anyway. Yeah, speaking of free lands, I'll take it. I'm not sure what I need the lands for, to be honest. I guess I guess I have an ice high troll in the sideboard. Maybe I get some snow payoff. Who knows? Wow, so many playables. How many cards do I have? I have 17 and 9. So it's 20, uh, 27 playables. What am I supposed to take? Am I just still supposed to take struggle? What am I cutting? This is a weird spot. Like I'm tempted to take the mountain because I have so many playables, but this is solid removal. And uh, yeah, I don't know, probably Hoggy Mob. I can consider cutting another Arnie Snaze the Troll. Pardon me. There's also a pup. I think I can wield a pup. Let's cut Brawl. Let's probably cut the Helm. It's just, it's not that good in our deck. We can cut one Vandal. And this is 25. We still need to make two cuts. Glittering Frost can go. Wow, a third Firewalker or a pup. I think I'm gonna take a pup just for curve consideration purposes. Like you wanna make sure you can get your frenzied raider going early. And uh, you know, getting this as a as a as a five oh first strike is no joke off Bergie. Again, for free. Wow, what a great draft. Like all the play playables in the world, our colors absolutely wide open through to the end. Also white apparently is, is open. It's not surprising. Um, ooh, and we have a Broken Wings. I will main deck a Broken Wings. And a Cavalry. <laughs> So I think I want to play 17 lands. <laughs> um, not sure if I need the world tree, like it's just a tapped land in my deck. Probably cutting it, yeah, it's just no need. Yeah, Fumarole could be powered sometimes like you can you can get a discount on double spell with these two uh two lands seeker can find them how many cuts do i need to make 17 lands i need to make six cuts all right so one craven hulk hoggy mobs out we can even cut we can even cut ruthless you and go like 16 lands 
go super aggro. We don't really need a rootless you and uh, one of the two cinder hard giants. Like our deck's just gas. We don't need berserkers. Demon bolts at two drop. Like if we're just attacking, boasting, attacking, boasting, we're winning. Only downside is like with two spells, you kind of want to play big late game stuff because finding a cinder hard giant off Savella is just ridiculous. Finding a four card, four uh, four mana spell off Savella is not as exciting. But the question is like, what am I cutting? I still need to make one cut as it is. And I'd rather just cut a land. It's a 17. So I have 17, 11. I mean, with Horn of Bounty, Horn of Bounties, it's, it's pricey, like five mana, you're taking a big turn off and you're making a huge investment, but you could just power out a bunch of cards and overrun your opponent in the late game. It doesn't really mesh well with what we're trying to do. I think like we're seven times out of 10, we'll probably just want to play Bergy on turn three, specifically for, for Raider and the Firewalkers. I don't think we need top end. I think this is fine. And uh, 17, 11, let's see. So it's eight, nine, uh, more red. So nine, nine. Yeah, I think we can cut one forest. And this is nine, eight. Do we want to go to 10, seven? We need double red for Fumarol. We need, we do need green for Horizon Seeker, but we should be fine. I really like this deck. I think this is like a B plus deck. Not not quite A minus, definitely not A. We, we don't have too many big bombs. Bergy's probably the craziest uh, enabler that we have given with given what we have like even just getting one trigger off firewalker you know that it makes sure that you can draw free land maybe you'll get some cheap spell to play it out that would be pretty sick and of course chariot is also a bomb in our deck perfect just solid opening hand Fearless Pup is no joke. I mean, people really disregard this card. I think incorrectly. Next turn, we suspend struggle if we don't find a two drop. Green, white. Are we playing the ham? Who's our opponent? No. Uh, no blocks. So our opponent is stuck on lands. Oh no, he's not. Never mind. Uh, yeah, I guess this is fine. So let's go struggle on Sentinel. I mean, this means that Fearless Pup will basically attack like on a post for a couple of turns because it, rep it represents four power first strike. It's unlikely that our opponent is gonna play something with five toughness here. So even though we're killing like a very weak creature, I still think that was worth doing because that threat of activation is legit. So let's see, is it just chariot? I think it is. Any way you look at it, I mean, this is just such a ridiculously strong, strong card. 
I wish I, I mean, if I can, what am I at? 3% of finding a run amok? 1% chance of finding, or 3% chance of finding Demon Bolt? And 30% uh, chance of finding Fumarole. By the way, why am I main decking Broken Wings? I'm an idiot. This is best of three. There's no reason to main deck Broken Wings in best of three. I do it in best of one, like usually because there are more targets than there aren't. So we found Bergy. So do we just trade this for a 4-4 four, four and make a 2-2? Two, two? I think that's correct. Let's just get the value from this now. And um, let's go Firewalker and pac -Maid because then next turn we can play Bergy and boast twice off Firewalker. And if we get a land, we can play Frenzied Raider and this becomes a 4-4. Four -four. It's pretty sick. Sure. Not sure why I would ever play this card like outside of a dedicated. Oh no, you killed my Firewalker. That's unfortunate. So let's see, what's the play? I can Fumeral the Pac-Mate. I don't have any Snowlands. Then I can play Frenzied Raider and get in for a ton. I don't mind that. Yeah, he takes no blocks. Wow, okay. That's uh, ambitious. Now I might just uh, play this for the for the five mana horn. Nope. Our opponent's done. So he's playing a bunch of pack mates. Deep green, splashing white. Splashing white for crawl. That kind of makes me want to keep um, broken wings in my deck. It makes me think that maybe he's like splashing for some really ridiculously strong um, equipment. And even if he's not, I want to disrupt this combo. So I guess I don't mind keeping this in. I could I could sideboard a smashing success to mess with his uh, strongholds. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking maybe play Hoggy Mob. Hoggy Mob dealing two off Bergy could be good, but like, what am I cutting? Craven Hulk. Craven Hulk from Hoggy Mob. I guess that could be better for us. Maybe I should be main decking Hoggy Mob with uh, Bergy. Like the, the difference between dealing one or dealing two is exponential. Like it's not you can't look at it as like an iteration of one. It's, it's more than that. It lets you make attacks you otherwise couldn't. You can deal two to the, two to the face and just, uh, you know, end your opponent, even if he's got blockers. So I think it's a mistake to play the giant over this. So I'm going to keep it in for now. So our opponent hasn't seen Bolt. 
<clears throat> Interesting. All right, so what do we do here? We suspend struggle and then bolt something. Set up for chariot next turn. Maybe he, he equips something here. I like how he's masking, making the Sword of the Realms. And I like how the ability is the same as what Sword of the, Sword of the Realms has, right? It's a pretty nice theme. Okay. Counter goes on the Gladewalker. Yeah, not, not the most efficient use of this spell, but I don't want it to fall too far behind. Next turn could be explosive for us because we can Tundra. Did I call well, I think I was calling that card Thundering Fumeral. That's a different magic card. Tundra Fumeral and Struggle which means that uh, Chariot could attack unimpeded. Our opponent wouldn't have double blocks and we're guaranteed to make a, like two, well, not guaranteed, but very likely to make two cat tokens over two turns in that scenario before our opponent can like double block Chariot. And I'm sure we're just gonna draw a run by then and just, or Arnie slays the troll, come to think of it. I think I could I could equip in response to Arnie slays the, slays the troll and have, uh, no! <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's it is what it is. It is what it is. I love how much time I just spent talking about how many cats I'm going to make, and now the answer is zero. I'm going to make zero cats. All right, let's start with the raider discarding a mountain. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to use my removal spell on anything. We, we can trade off the board right now. He doesn't have a second red source to sack armory, but he can... Uh, he can activate the stronghold this turn. Chooses not to. Interesting. So, so we just go Firewalker and suspend. And I could also give it haste and attack. Is this sorcery? Yeah. So what's my other plan? I mean, I could also like... Give this haste attack. No, it's not good to attack this turn because if I if I top deck a spell, I wouldn't be able to cast it. I think we just suspend struggle. We can double struggle next turn. Double struggle. Ah, he used the fixing off Sentinel. I missed that. I missed that. Hmm. We'll, we'll find a way of dealing with that. I'm not, I'm not too concerned. We can like fumarole and fight to kill it. Of course, it's not the most efficient option, but I can also just attack into the 6-5 with Firewalker. Or we can find our Masked Vandal. 
And maybe if this goes to game three, I play two Vandals. Did we see any other targets? Ernie slays the troll. Hmm. Let's attack with the Firewalker first. Okay. So it's fair trade. And now. I guess I still want to play this. So the reason to kill this is so that he, if he finds another source of white, he won't have as good of an attack with the Vandal. I guess I could still just double block it. It'll be a 2-4. I don't want to waste struggle right now. I should keep in mind that this actually costs two instead of three off this uh, snow-covered land. That might be relevant next turn, but for now, let's just pass. It would be nice to find broken wings, wouldn't it? Masked Vandal or Broken Wings, either one's fine. Oh, yuck. So now he can make a treasure token and the next turn he can use the Stronghold. Like this doesn't change the math too much because I could still struggle and uh, fumarole. But I am taking seven in the air, which is not, not exciting. I hope he re-equips on the Vandal right now because then I can struggle and uh, yeah, then I can struggle after plus two, uh, two plus one plus one counters are put on. So then this would be like a four, four, five, five off struggle. And then these two can trade. It's not really a two for one because I got these you know, off a card. So he's thinking whether or not to re-equip. And uh, he does see that I have two cards suspended. Sure. Now he can't re-equip. Ooh, Svela. Does Svela change the math at all? Yeah, so let's go, all right, let's go Fumeral. He's tapped out, so I'm just gonna do this now. Pay with snow. And then we struggle. Now I can attack. Do I wanna struggle again, actually? This is colorless. Yeah, I can struggle again. And I can, oh no, I can't play Svela now. I'm an idiot. That's a colorless mana. Oh well, at least I'm getting a good attack in. And if his last card is not a creature, I mean, he's just got a bunch of equipment sitting on the battlefield doing nothing. And I kind of two for one myself. Plus I, I took a turn off playing Svela. I think I, I, think I misplayed that, but in, in the end, it might still work out for us. I should, I should say it should, should still work out for us, especially that I'm gonna gain five life next turn, <laughs> by all means. And I'm two lands away from activating Svela. 
It'll find me Bergy, it'll find me Runamuck. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's a great target for Masked Vandal to uh, pick off. Nice, all right. Very close to uh, three back-to-back -back three and O's. Two more, two more to go. Orange Thunder, that's a cool name. I think I wanna play first. Nice run amok in my opening hand. No creatures, but hopefully I'll find something. I think a Seeker's Chariot might, you know, with, with Runamuck can even help me catch up, even in a worst case scenario if I have a really slow start. Oh, well, that's obviously not good. I'm not gonna play, this does nothing right now. Wow, we drew another land, all right. Well. Our opponent's not doing anything either. So I guess it's not the worst, even though it's kind of strange. Like we have a low curve. We should have found like one of our two frenzied raiders, you know, even a master vandal, anything. You know, I visited Cyprus a little while ago, and uh, one thing you learn about that island is that it is infested with cats. They're just, I don't think this is a good card to play in Limited. I'm not sure what, what you're trying to do with, you're paying two mana to copy a spell. You can foretell it. It is instant speed, so it does lead into some like really interesting situations. Yeah, had he attacked, I would not block. Ooh, nice. So. I don't think I want to cast Arnie Slays the Troll now. Let's just. Uh, let's play Firewalker. And let's crew. with these two. I'm not gonna play Rodamuk. Just no need. You can, I can wait for a better setup. I'm so far ahead right now that uh, he, he'll, I mean, he wants to, obviously he wants to use this. Instead he's using, he's using smashing success. Yeah, I mean, I am, of course I'm, I'm a bit screwed if he finds a second uh, island. So I wanna try to deal as much damage and get as much value off Firewalker as I can. This is sorcery, right? Next turn he can do it because he's, he's got the treasures. So he'll he'll definitely catch up and we might lose. We might lose to Frostbire, but it's not like uh, 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 interesting. He's playing cavalry. It's not not what I would have done. Okay. That means he has an island in his hand. Again, no reason to play Arnie Slays the Troll. I imagine he goes just like, nope. I was gonna say he's gonna play Island Sack. Yeah, 
One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, he needs one more land anyway, so he can't do it till next turn. So I guess he couldn't have done it with the two treasures. He was one mana short. Ah, I shouldn't have played a land. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Do I attack with Svela? I think I do. I have another Svela in my hand. So if this one dies, it's like no big deal. I guess if I like spike a land with this and it goes to waste, it's not a big deal because I have a bunch of lands anyway, but it's still sad when it happens because it's just a silly misplay that one did not need to make. But let's run amok. Why not? Not sure what he could have here that, that gets me. Yeah. Okay. So main deck smashing success. That's uh that's a bit a bit aggressive. I think I want the second masked vandal. Yeah, so there's a target. Did I see? I thought I saw something else, but I'm probably confusing it with the previous game. Yeah, I'm thinking about the uh Angel making equipment, so no, we, we just need one. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we, we almost got blown out with that. Uh, deal to do all creatures land. I think we, we feels like we dodged a bit of a bullet there. I have yet to go off with Bergy, Frenzied Raider, and uh, Firewalker. That's my desired combo before this is done. Am I going to get it now? Maybe. There's one of the components. Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at the situation, the best thing, like the best uh, line of play for me, especially against uh, something that can block, Bergy give it haste and then just clear the path with struggle. Arnie slays the troll and fumarole, and our opponent's taking five a turn. So let's go land. Bergy. Even if we don't find a land, we can still like play Arnie. And by the way, we can even uh, get some mana next turn off this. Uh, summoning sickness. Yeah, it looks like our opponent's new to the game. That is a good target for Masked Vandal, but I'd need a creature to die. So. I guess we go Horizon Seeker. Okay. Well, that was unfortunate. That was the second game too, right? Yeah. All right, one away from back to back three times, three in a row, three no's. One away. This is a really cute card from uh, Zandikar Rising. That did some silly things in Limited. Sack a land, put two lands into play, instant speed.
Oof. So what's my chance of drawing a mountain? 24 plus 3, 27%. It's like 75% by turn three, where I'd want to play Firewalker. Yuck. I really need red. Like this deck is heavily red. And I go first. Ah, oh, that's terrible. Actually, let's let's dump Arnie Slave the Troll. We we might not even be able to play this. Gosh, that's unfortunate. Well, we did spike land. <laughs> like, even if I had three mountains and all green cards, I'd probably keep the previous hand, because my problem with this deck is not, um, you know, I, I need mountains more than, I, I need sources of red more than I do green because my deck is more geared towards uh, red, especially in the early game. So, yeah, let's just attack with everything and run amok if we need to. You could also just let the cavalry trade That you know that could have been an option, and we could play Bergy. So next turn, this can boast twice. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This represents ten damage. Fortunately, I don't have five mana for Runamok and the boast. But my opponent's got to be looking at this and thinking, "Uh oh." Ah, I always forget whenever you cast a spell, add red mana. That's important. You're attacking. I'm okay trading off. Like, I don't think it was a huge decision there because this makes him miss on the counter trigger. And, uh, yeah, like he doesn't get the second counter, then you would have had a 4-4 four, four lifelink. So it may seem like a bad trade on paper, but I'm, I'm fine with it. I still keep forgetting to take broken wings out. <laughs> but again, like against our opponent, it's actually not that bad. All right, so we just let's just get in. I'm kind of tempted to like just fearless pop or run him up because I don't really want him to exile the firewalker with fall of the imposter. So I'm just going to sink my mana into getting two more damage through. Because I can play firewalker, give it haste, boast right away. So we don't know what this card is, but he's getting a discount on it. Raptor, okay. (laughs) 
are inverted to short. And another card foretold. Oh, sweet. So if I get a land, I was gonna say if I get a land, I can run amok and pump. But now, huh, so this is interesting. So if I attack, he's almost like forced to block and I'd have to run amok, but then I'd be floating two mana. I think the better play is to go Firewalker and just pass. So we don't know what this card is. Could be Demon Bolt. Wow, it's starting to attack, huh? Oh boy. So unfortunately, I can't play Raider and Boast and Run Amok. So let's see, what happens if I attack with both? Now let's just attack with the Firewalker. Okay, that's actually nice. And let's go. Yeah, because this. This puts even more pressure on him. And this means that I can boast again next turn and get a counter on Frenzied Raider. So far, mulling to six was not the worst thing in the world. It worked that well. Okay, okay. This definitely makes things a bit harder for us. So what can deal with that? Demon Bolt, Tundra Fumeral, not Thundering Fumeral. Broken Wings, assuming he doesn't have the Hexproof card, of course. What? What? You can't be serious. So the last card in his hand has to be a creature. What, what is he doing? I mean, his last card's got to be a creature with four toughness. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> That's a mistake. Because either way, he's got to chump my first striker. And I have plenty of life, so it's not like he's going to kill me. All right. So maybe I played two masked vandals. And again, $10,000 question, what am I cutting? I think broken things and masked vandal kind of do the same thing. So it's not it, like, I just, I don't know what to cut for it. I don't mind playing more essentially free enchantment removal and artifact, but I need to understand what the worst card of my deck is. And of course, I keep forgetting to take out. Yeah, I keep leaving Craven Hulk in this deck. I'm still winning. I guess it doesn't matter. But I'm supposed to. I'm, I'm supposed to take it out with Bergy and uh, Hagi Mob. Yeah, all my all my talk about uh, dealing to being expansion better, and I keep forgetting to take it out. I guess like when you're winning, you have a you have you're positively biased in favor of your deck. Yeah, it looks like our opponent had to multiply. That's unfortunate, but we're not really, we're not really off to a blazing start here. Rally the ranks, sure. It's a good target for Mast Vandal. 
blowing that up with broken wings at instant speed could make some messy, uh, could create some messy situations as well. <laughs> so do I play breaknet berserker and just not attack? I think I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> Because this makes a 1-1 one, one warrior, which becomes a 2-2. Two, two. And uh, that's scary. No blocks. He's, he's, got one, he's down to one card. So there's got to be a way for me to, to race in this situation, right? So I go to 10 if I don't block, but then I can eat the shield me. Oh, that's brutal. Now I have to block. So that's, that's a lot of damage. And um, how do I win though? I need to kill this. So I guess I can't block. Oh, this is bad. This is pretty bad. I go to one next turn and I could deal seven. I don't know, I don't know how I win this this match. I guess I could chump. Or not chump. I could I could trade. Right? So that's fine. So then I only take four and then I can eat this thing next turn. I'm okay. I'm actually fine being a bit too paranoid. Let's hope he drew land. Yeah, now he's even now he's even a bit hesitant to attack. No attacks. Wow, that's awesome. All right, so let's think this through. Let's first cast the fight spell. All right, nice. I think I think now we won. So now we go chariot. Uh, sure. So he gains the life. I still get the cats, and. Uh, I want to give one of these cats haste. And I don't want to trade my 5-5 five, five for a 3-2. So I'm just going to attack like this. And I'm fine if he trades off with either one of those cards. I think this is just lethal, right? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not being a prick here. It, it literally is just lethal. It doesn't matter how he blocks. I'm just telling him good game, not not to be a prick, but to kind of 
hurry it up a little bit. Yeah, so that he's not wasting his time or my time with uh, figuring out who to blog there. All right, nice. That was that was easy. Three back to back three no's. Let's see if we can go for four. <laughs> 